So let's have a look at some more issues with sliding window. Um, one of those issues is that we do have to have a finite sequence number. Uh, so unless you really want to waste an awful lot of the, um, uh, the frame size or packet size on the sequence number, uh, the reality is it will be limited and we have to at least uh, handle correctly the situation where the sequence number wraps around. Uh, so if, for example, we have a 3-bit uh, field, then there's eight possible values. Uh, and after sending eight frames, we actually have to wrap back around from sequence number seven back to sequence number zero. So then effectively we have to have uh, different uh, incarnations of the same sequence number over long periods of time or if the link is very fast, potentially over quite short periods of time. Uh, and this has become more of an issue as links become faster. Uh, the packet sizes typically don't grow uh, proportionately. Uh, and so we need to handle this. Um, so there's a number of different ways that uh, we can handle doing this. We could do a stop and wait type arrangement, right? Uh, with uh, two distinct sequence numbers as we've already described. Uh, and so this would solve that ambiguity problem, uh, but at the cost of uh, lower throughput. Um, otherwise, uh, we just have to, we, we could limit the size of a transfer. Once you reach some maximum sequence number, sorry, that's it. Uh, you can't send any more on that transfer. Um, otherwise, we can look at doing things like saying, well, let's make sure that the uh, the sliding window size is less than the maximum sequence number. And the question then is whether that's actually sufficient or whether there are still residual problems uh, that can come about. And so the issue then actually comes into play as to whether the receive window size is large or small. If the receive window size is very small, then there isn't the possibility for ambiguity. If on the other hand, the receive window size is as large as the sending window size, we can get into an ambiguous situation. So for example, if the sender sends uh, sequence numbers zero through six and the receiver acknowledges, uh, receives them and acknowledges them, but those acknowledgements from zero to six are lost, um, the sender can retransmit uh, from 0, 1 through uh, to 6, but the receiver is now expecting frames 7 and then the new 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and so it doesn't know, uh, it, it can't know for sure whether those frames coming are the new one, uh, the new 0, for example, or the old 0. Should it buffer them or have they already been acknowledged? So the way uh, to avoid this, if you're going to have the receive window size and the sending window size uh, the same, is that the sending win the sliding window size has to be um, less than half of the maximum sequence number, so that you kind of know which half of the range you're in at any point in time, and then the old and the new are separate halves around that point where you are and can be disambiguated uh, in a, a reliable manner. Okay, so if we step back for a moment then and have a look at sliding window uh, and think about what it actually achieves for us in a network, uh, there's a number of things that it does do for us. Uh, first up, it provides us with reliability. Uh, if a frame is lost in transit, uh, then it can arrange for its uh, reasonably efficient uh, retransmission. Uh, it also helps to make sure that the data arrives in the same order that it was sent. Uh, in the end, so that if frames arrive out of order, whether that's through uh, loss of packets or frames in retransmission, or maybe you actually are sending uh, frames over multiple links simultaneously and then re-aggregating them at the other end. Uh, and you know, just like multiple people driving to the same destination, taking different routes might get there at different times. Uh, and maybe the person who left last won't get there last if they've taken a smarter route. Um, it also, you know, so in the network context of this kind of uh, reordering of, uh, of data, it helps to solve that. Um, another benefit it actually has is, um, is uh, flow control uh, for the frames. So the receiver is able to, uh, to throttle the rate at which the sender sends it frames to the maximum that it can handle them at. Uh, and so this prevents 
uh, the receiver from being overrun and then actually needing to, you know, like losing frames purely from its processing speed rather than from the network. Uh, and so uh, in this way, the sender actually can kind of uh, throttle back to the level at which the receiver is able to, uh, to receive in quite a natural uh, manner. That's, it really is a very natural side effect of this kind of protocol. Um, so a, it has a certain elegancy to it. Okay, and Ethernet we will look at in the next video.